The Apocalypse A surprisingly large number of people are actually looking forward to the downfall of modern technological civilization for one reason or another. A lot of people seem to think that uh, this will mean that things will end up in the rightful hands of the people who should be in charge of society rather than the politicians or whoever else it might be that they don't like. Others believe that technology and so on has made us uh, decadent and weak and they believe a more Darwinian struggle for life will somehow make humanity better in, in some way. The, the modern world is a lot more fragile, I think, than we necessarily recognize. The whole supply chain, the amount of technological know-how and processing to produce chemicals and so on that we use in everything. The dependence on fossil fuels goes far further than simply making cars and trucks and things go. You know, plastics, tar, all kinds of other byproducts from cracking petroleum spirit or crude oil or whatever else it might be. You know, these are used everywhere. Everywhere. You, know, you knock out one part of that chain and everything else <laughs> starts to fall. So things are pretty uh, fragile uh, on this planet for our technological civilization, particularly our first world technological civilization. And should anything horrendous happen, we're probably all fucked. And even if you've prepared you know, even if you're a doomsday prepper with a bunker and plenty of ration packs and water purifiers and air purifiers and, and all the rest, you're probably still fucked because you're going to be vastly and overwhelmingly outnumbered by people who didn't prepare and who want what you have. So whether it's a super volcano going off or a meteor strike or a new ice age or global warming climate change speeding up and becoming catastrophic or a nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan that somehow spreads further whatever it might be it's it's going to be shit it's going to be shit for everybody and a lot of things are going to fail as and when something like this happens if it does now, a lot of post-apocalyptic fiction tends to deal with the immediate aftermath, where people have been wiped out by zombies or a plague or, or whatever else, and there's plenty of stuff just lying around for you to pick up. Tinned food, bottled water, uh, replacement batteries, all, all of these kinds of things that you might need. Not a great deal of post-apocalyptic fiction deals with the longer term aftermath, the rebuilding of civilization, the rediscovery. Now this kind of thing has happened before in our history. The fall of the Roman Empire wasn't due to a, a cataclysm, but a great amount of knowledge was lost and only preserved in churches and monasteries, which is why a lot of the recovery was so slow, or was preserved in the Muslim world and so wasn't really reintroduced to Europe uh, until the invasions. It's a shame because the rebuilding of civilization, the building blocks of civilization, what would allow us to lift ourselves back up out of the mire is to me some of the most interesting aspects of all this. Now it's been hinted at in some fiction, the uh, strangers travelling around with the three ring binder of how to make windmills and stuff in, in the Walking Dead series. Or there's a novel by uh, Niven and Pornell called Lucifer's Hammer where a comet strikes the earth. Most of the book deals with the kind of immediate aftermath, the panic, the struggle to survive and so on. But one person in the book, a scientist from J JPL, 
understands that he needs to think more long term, even though he himself is diabetic and is going to die without insulin. So he preserves a huge number of books and reference texts and historical documents of how people used to do things by sealing them in plastic and burying them in a septic tank. <laughs> and later on in the book, and the kind of third act, I guess, third or fourth act, right, right at the end, yeah, people are sent to retrieve this knowledge and they start to rebuild civilization. Um, ultimately defending uh, an operating nuclear power plant which can provide them with electricity by using his knowledge and his books to produce mustard gas to wipe out a whole uh, bunch of marauders and cannibals that are descending upon their, their little slice of heaven. A similar idea on a much grander scale, the same authors put out in Footfall which is about an alien invasion but it's all plausible technology um, so these aliens from Alpha Centauri called the Fethip um, arrive by Bussard Ramscoop powered craft but their knowledge is all based on stone carvings from a previous intelligent species on their planet that wiped itself out using biological or, or nuclear weapons it's it's not entirely clear but they left all their knowledge in these um, impermeable blocks of stone called Thukton so all of their knowledge all of their science all of their advance is based upon only what they've been told uh, f from these artifacts from this previous civilization but they've built themselves up to a a star-faring society off the basis of that, whereas humans have had to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and have had to invent everything and in the end human adaptation and willingness to sacrifice and uh, individuality to an extent wins out against this this alien herd species. But the idea of the Thuktun, the idea of the three-ring binder of civilization is a powerful one and I've been reading The Knowledge uh, by Lewis Dartnell which kind of ish purports to be such a civilizational bootstrapping book. Um, a, a lot of that's marketing. It isn't really complete but it does give you at least a kind of starter compendium on all the things you need to know and more importantly, I think, why they work the way they did. And also talks about how we can leapfrog certain stages of, of development, of technological development. So if things did go horribly wrong, this could provide a blueprint for building ourselves back up to a kind of early industrial society. Um, but n not perhaps uh, much further than that without having to really uh, bring the whole world up w with us and create all these supply networks and so on. So it, yeah, it, it covers everything you need to know just, it, just in very short form. You'd need supporting text as well, but the basics are there from how the world could end, talks about the grace period when there's plenty of stuff from the old civilization around, it talks about how to make and maintain shelter, how to make and maintain food, medicine, um, gives real world examples of where people have improvised certain things. Um, for example, during the Bosnian War, um, certain towns were cut off completely from electricity. So they cannibalized motors from cars attached them to water mills, put them on rafts in the river and used the rotation to power the alternator to give them electricity. You know, so there's all kinds of um, fascinating ideas of how you could maintain some form of, of civilization and power and creature comforts and so on following a, a, a fall of civilization and how you could rebuild, how to make potash, uh, uses for different things, how to make soap, uh, wood pyrolysis, uh, alcohol, how to make biofuels from oil, 
it just it just goes on and on and on and nothing's in huge depth but it's there sufficiently that you could now I wasn't quite sure where to put <laughs> this this video because I read it for background for my writing and for my game design I'm quite fond of, of post-apocalyptic fiction though English post-apocalyptic fiction takes a takes a slightly different tack it's um call it a cozy apocalypse or a green apocalypse I think that's because we tend to look back on rural life with rose-tinted spectacles and want to somehow get get back to that in in England whereas American post-apocalyptic fiction tends to um, emphasize the rugged individualism and the and the gunplay <laughs> and so on but it's it's fascinating if if you are writing post-apocalyptic fiction and you want it to be at all realistic this is a really good buy um, it's it's interesting in and of itself but if you want to have a post-apocalyptic world that makes sense that it, that is realistic if you want to tend towards the hard science end of that then then I think this is an invaluable resource um, to, to help you maintain that verisimilitude in whatever it is that, that you're creating so heartily recommended uh, it's it's a bit dry I guess uh, <laughs> I found my eyes glazing over on some of the more technical parts so uh, style I'd give it a three substance I'd give it a five overall four out of five grim stars and uh, heartily recommended the knowledge by Lewis Dartnell subtitle how to rebuild our world after an apocalypse definitely worth a look Zang. Monster misbehaving, planets needing saving, situations graven. I'll form the head, the enemy is clever. We're smaller, but whatever. When we put it together, I'll form the head. Y'all can do the training, swing energy machete. If combinations ready, I'll form the head, I'll form the head. I'll